Hello there. Welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Vancouver. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Paul Chion. And we've got semifinal action lined up for you here. We thought we'd start off with Jonathan Zaksek. He's playing Merfolk. Apparently, he's uh, quite a Merfolk enthusiast. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that also by, you know, the configuration of his deck. All foil, Japanese, <laughs> everything sweet. On the other side, that's right, that's Sam Black playing Death's Shadow, the, the deck that... He worked on before the tournament, kind of got everybody on his team on, and boy, have they benefited from it. Sam, two of his other teammates, Jerry Thompson and Josh Utter Layton, are also in the semifinals right. with that same deck. All three managed to avoid each other in the top eight and all won their matches. Unreal. Yeah. So we're going to start here, but we do have also Josh Utter Layton and Jerry Thompson. They're, uh, they, have not, they are not underway. We will be watching them as well, and I'll keep you updated as that goes. But for now, we're going to start off here. So let's see how this goes. It looks like Inquisition of Kozilek took away eh, a curse catcher. Yeah. Fine. I think Sam just wanted to get that out of his hand. Ooh, Ooh. Look at this. Jonathan Zaksek with the spreading seas on the Godless Shrine is going to pull double duty. Right. And as I mentioned before, with the Death Shadow deck, not a lot of lands in the deck, right? It doesn't use blue mana. If, Z if Jonathan fires up a couple of these spreading seas, that might really make it difficult for Sam Black to cast his spells. Interestingly, blue's the only mana it doesn't use. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we can just say Sam Black's playing five-color Death Shadow. Yeah, five-color Death yeah. Shadow. But no, but seriously, the, these spreading seas could be very problematic for Sam because one of the other things is they don't play that many lands. They right. play 15 lands in this deck, and all of them you know, really need to pull their weight when you're playing cards like Holagon's Command and a bunch of one-drops, so it gets kind of interesting. Yeah. And the thing is, Sam Black also just doesn't have a lot of spells that utilize colorless mana as well. He's got a Liliana, but a lot of them are like one mana spells. So when yes. you put a Spreading Seas on a Godless Shrine, it basically just kind of, that land doesn't do a whole lot. All you can use it for is casting Tarma Waves and Lilianas. Yeah. Interesting stuff in the early stages. Now this is a Thought Seas to follow up the Inquisition of Kozilek. And let's see what he wants to take here. There's a Vendillion click in the middle. Right. Silver Gill Adept and a Harbinger of the Tides. Sam's hand is loaded, however. Lots of removal. That's what he wants to see versus these little blue creatures, isn't it? Yeah. So Sam, I think at this point, just kind of determining or deciding how grindy of a game he wants to play. He can choose to get the Silver Gill Adept because it is a threat that will cycle. Or he can choose to get a bigger, a bigger, a, a more impactful card like a Vendillion Click or the Harbinger of the Tides. Mm -hmm. Sam's <laughs> lining up his removal spells with what it is that Jonathan's going to have and perhaps even predicting what Jonathan might do the next turn. And as you can see from Sam Black's hand, Sam Black has a Culligan's Command. He cannot cast that. No. <laughs> He's got Island, Blood Crypt, and Basic Forest in his hand. Yeah, he did try to set himself up the best to be able to cast it by getting that Blood Crypt there. Mm -hmm. But he still needs a black or red mana source to do it. And are we going to see that draw step Vendillion click from Jonathan? Absolutely. And uh, Sam is going to respond by taking out that threat with Tarfire. But Jonathan's going to get a look at his hand. And he can even take one of these, have Sam put him on the bottom of his library, and then Sam would draw a card. Now, interestingly, though, Vendillion Click has so many choices when you play it. You can target yourself. You can target your opponent. But you also can just not. You can just right. say, you know, you can just keep those cards. I'll write them down. Right. Thanks for the info. And that does frequently happen. But in this scenario, the Merfolk deck has basically no answers to a Death Shadow. He does play three copies of Dismember in the main deck. But that doesn't really do enough to deal with the Death Shadow. Dismember will kill most things, yes. but not... It, it basically kills nothing in this deck. So he very likely will get rid of the Death Shadow here. And leave Sam threatless. Yes, just with a bunch of removal in his hand. No. Oh, He's getting rid of the Fatal Push. He must think that he can race. Now, you can see why he might think that. <laughs> Sam's on 13. <laughs> he's on 20. Yeah. Oh, and Sam draws a Tarmogoyf. That he can actually cast. <laughs> Off the Basic Forest. Oh, look at this. Instant, tribal, sorcery, land, creature, artifact. It is a 6-7 Tarmogoyf. Wow. All right. I was in the feature match area earlier, and I saw Jonathan play two copies of Master of Waves. 
in one turn. <laughs> so if you're wondering why Jonathan got two elemental tokens there, there is a spreading seas on the board, which is owned by Jonathan, giving him two devotion. He controls it. He owns it. Right. Unfortunately, it's a little short here for this Tarmogoyf, isn't it? Tarmogoyf's going to do a lot of work here. Six damage. He even has a teamer battle rage. That's potentially 12. He's probably going to hold that until a later time. And Culligan's Command cannot get rid of the Master of Waves, that is, as it has protection from red. So he can just go ahead and choose to play a 3-3 Death Shadow here if he uses the Fetch Land and gets a Shock Land here. Jonathan very likely to play the Harbinger of the Tides that he has in hand. Send that Goyf packing. <laughs> yes. Buys him a lot of time. Yeah. The question is, does he want to block here? And I, I really do feel like Jonathan has decided that this is going to be a race, and it's a race that he might be able to win. Yeah. So Sam likely going to 10 life here. If he goes to 10 life, the Death Shadow will have the ability to block all of the creatures on John's side of the board. What is he looking for? A stomping ground? He's got a stomping ground in his there deck. There it is. There yep. it is. Stomping ground. But this is a very nice situation for Sam Black. If Jonathan chooses to try to race here, Sam now has a Death Shadow on the board. Sam can just opt to take the six damage. If John plays the Harbinger of the Tides and Sam takes six, then that's going to be a 9-9 Death Shadow with Team or Battle Rage. That's 18 damage. Yeah. Yeah, the Battle Rage just adds that extra dimension to this deck. It's not the primary focus of the deck, but it still has that explosive uh, capability. Right. That looks like a Marrow Regery in John's hand. If he has another land, he could have a pretty nice turn here where he can go Marrow Regery into Land Harbinger the Tides to bounce the Tarmogoyf. Then he can also use the trigger to tap the Death Shadow. It's not quite lethal, though, is it? I don't think so, because the elementals are not merfolk. Right. I don't think he has that extra land, though. Oh, oh. I see. He's got another Spreading Seas. Shutting off Sam Black's black sources. Which is very important, although we have developed this game pretty far now. Right. So Sam cannot cast that call against command, but he still has that TMR Battle Rage in yes. hand that Jonathan does not know about. Maybe he has another spreading seas. Uh, <laughs> I think he's probably just bouncing the Tarmogoyf. All right, Goyf goes back to hand. So how aggressive does John want to be here? Based on how he's played, I would think that he's trying to be quite aggressive, but he may be rethinking that now. Right, yeah. He, yeah, I mean, he, he can, he's just yeah, passed. He, he, yeah, because, I mean, the Death Shadow can just, is just brick walling all of the creatures here. Yeah. Sam drew a spell that he can't cast. An Inquisition? Yes. A black spell. Mm -hmm. yeah, he can still cast a Tarmogoyf again. Yeah. So if John draws a lord here, uh, an island walk lord, he does have the ability to deal six damage to Whoa, Sam. How about another master of waves? Wow. That's what he drew. That is one, He's going to get four. five elementals? Five, and they're and all they're going to be three twos? They will be three twos. <laughs> and I think John, at this point, needs to be mindful of the fact that Sam can have a team or battle rage. And it's probably best for him to just go all in on the following turn here. For Jonathan to go all in next exactly. turn? Exactly. Not this turn, you know, because you don't, want it, you don't want to set up a situation where Sam goes down to like two life, then kills you with Death Shadow, Team or Battle Rage. You want to get him down to zero in one shot. Exactly. Yeah, because the thing about Team or Battle Rage, very powerful card, but that Death Shadow is only a 3-3 right now. The Goyf's big, but not lethal. Yeah. Sam doesn't really, in the main deck, Sam has very few answers to Master Waves. He has one Collective Brutality and one Fatal Push, which needs Revolt. Oh, no, I, do, I take that back. He also has two copies of Liliana, The Last Hope. He's 
miles away from being able to <laughs> cast anything he has like no that. Way to, he? Yeah, he has no way to kill the Master of Waves currently in his hand. So I think we're likely going to s go to game two here. It's 24 damage in elementals only. <laughs> yeah, so he actually, yeah, he, so he got six more yeah. seahorses there to add to the other two. He's got eight. <laughs> Well above lethal, and Sam's wow. going to scoop him up. Jonathan Zaksek takes game one from Sam Black. You know, I got to say, things were looking pretty good for Sam for most of that game. But, right. uh, but Jonathan, off the back of those two ultra-powerful Master Waves, really swung the tides back in his favor. Yeah, definitely. Taking a look at Sam Black's sideboard, a card that's... 100% going to be boarded, and he's got three copies of Fatal Push in his sideboard. I think he's going to be wanting those cards. Whereas Jonathan here has a couple of copies of Tidebinder Mage that I imagine he's going to bring in because it does shut off the Tarmogwaves. Question is, is he going to bring in a Relic of Progenitus? Mm. It is a way to slow down the Delirium. It keeps Tarmogwaves at bay. So that's four potential cards he can bring in. I think... It's probably correct to actually just board out those three dismembers that he has in his deck because it's just not going to kill any of the creatures. Yeah. I mean, is there, is there an argument to be said to have those in to kill a Tarmogoy early? They're not 6-7 when he plays it every time. Most of the time, though. And I don't think you want to have, you want to take the, the risk of just having that dismember in your hand and Sam having it be a 5-6. Yeah. It's just not worth it. It's just because too bad. Yeah. It, it just needs, it needs to be any other card that has an impact on the game. John could consider maybe bringing in some number of Dispel uh, just to kind of protect his creatures against Fatal the cheap push. removal spells mm -hmm. that Sam has. He's got Tar Fires. He's got Fatal Pushes. Yeah. I think if he had some cards that he really just didn't like in the main deck, I could see that. Yeah. But the spell seems medium. Right. I, I like the relics, though. Yes, the relics are good. I think he's likely going to be boarding out three dismembers and probably one Vendillion click. Okay. Sam's, Sam's deck kind of mostly does the same thing. Yeah. It's kind of redundant. Very redundant. So, and the Vendillion click, no Merfolk synergies. Gen that's generally a card you're playing in the main deck just to give you a little bit of disruption against the linear like combo decks, yeah. right? Because the Merfolk deck in the main deck doesn't have a lot of counter magic. There's no counter magic. There's no force of will in modern. All he has are some spreading seas, some dismembers, and the two Vendillion clicks as interaction. By the way, those spreading seas, the first one did good work. If he would have drawn the second one a little bit earlier, it could have really shut down Sam's ability to cast spells, period. Yes, definitely. I think spreading seas is, is quite strong here. Also, it just makes all of his creatures unblockable. Yeah. If, the, if a lord manages to, to stick. Yeah, which tends to be the case. Yeah. And John is opting to play the Vendillion Clicks. That's kind of a flex slot when you're playing the Merfolk deck. If you're expecting, for example, a metagame where there's a lot of removal, I have also seen a lot of lists that play two copies of Kira Glassbinner. Mm. I like that card. Yeah. It's pretty good against removal. Yeah. <laughs> play that one in cube a lot. Yeah, it's very annoying. Yes. <laughs> So we've got three Death Shadow decks in our semifinals, for those of you just tuning in. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Cheon in the booth here. We had uh, Obzon Company. That fell to Death Shadow. We had Affinity, but Jonathan here with his Merfolk deck beat that two games to one. Apparently, John turned Mulligan to four in game three. Uh, we came in just after that, right. I see. That makes a lot more sense. Death Shadow defeated our lone burn player in the top eight. Nathaniel Knox, he, uh, he got smashed by Josh utter Layton, two games to zero. And then the other Death Shadow deck in the top eight was in the hands of Jerry Thompson, who took care of the Hate Bears deck from uh, Jason Samard and put him into the other semifinal. Yeah. So J Jonathan, Jonathan is the last hope? He is. If it, if it, it's either going to be Death Shadow or Merfolk, and it's a lot of pressure <laughs> on uh, Jonathan's shoulders, though. <laughs> he bore it well, and he's up a game. And it looks like we're just about underway in game number two. Is Sam Black going to be able to come back? He was very excited about this deck coming into the weekend. So much that he told all of his teammates to play it too. Right. And they're thanking him now. 
So a reasonable hand from Sam. He's got a straight wraith to, to cycle, a Mishra's bubble also to cycle, and he has a turn one hand disruption spell to go along with a tar fire. So looks like Sam's going to be keeping this one. What about Jonathan? I see a fancy shiny card, so I'm assuming that was an Ether Vial. Yeah, he does have yeah. uh, Masterpiece Ether Vials in his list. But it looks like he's decided not to keep it. So this is Jonathan on the draw. And the Death Shadow deck is very good at punishing these mulligans because it's playing eight copies of one, eight one mana hand disruption spells in the main deck. Yeah. Yeah, it has the ability to absolutely tear through yeah. the opponent's hand. Yeah, we saw in an earlier uh, affinity match which I, uh, with Andres Prost where he just kept a hand with a couple of Mox Opals, a couple of Ornithopters, and two lands because he just was basically saying, well, yeah, Mulligan is really bad against this matchup. I'm just going to basically rely on the top of my deck to basically win. So you got some lands in your opening hand, got some spells, probably should just keep. Here's six for Jonathan. Got to keep her here, John. It looks like one land. All right, well, he's kept it and put the probably another land <laughs> on top of his library. And let's get underway here. What does Sam have to start things off? Bobble himself. Yep. Get a little bit of info. He does have a fetch land here. So the, uh, I like the sequencing here. You start out with the bobble because Sam has access to Street Wraith. If he wants to draw that card on top of his library, he'll just cycle the Street Wraith. But because he didn't like it, he's going to use the fetch land to shuffle it away. Now he's very likely to just fire off the Inquisition here. The best turn one play that Sam can basically muster. He doesn't have to cycle the Street Wraith right away here. So Inquisition, target you. And we're going to get a chance to look at what Jonathan kept it, yeah. in exactly the same form it was when he kept it. He just puts that spreading seas on the top. Yeah. And it looks like John did board in that Dispel. He did. He brought in the yeah. Dispel. And this hand actually looks pretty good. Remember, Jonathan put a card on top of his library, it almost assuredly is a land. Yeah. It's either going to be a land or an Aether Vial. Those are the only two cards that you can Yeah. And this hand looks keep. pretty good. I mean, it's two drop, two drop, two drop, one drop, two drop. Yeah. You know, if he goes land, land, he's going to be able to deploy his threats. The Merfolk deck isn't blazingly fast. And by the <laughs> way, there goes the spreading seas, as you predicted, Paul. Yeah, I like that. And then Sam successfully remembers <laughs> his Mishra's Bobble. All right, so Sam does need to find a threat here. He found a Thought Seize instead. <coughs> he could, though, use his Street Wraith first if he wants to try to dig for a Tarmogoyf here. Yeah, if he finds a Tarmogoyf, he wants to cycle first. And it looks like he paused on that thought as right. well and maybe considering doing just that. And if he wants to do that, perhaps he should just use the Fetch Land first, thin out the deck. He wants to lose a bunch of life anyways. They're frequently using a Fetch Land to... to yeah, take a bunch of damage. So, yeah, of course, Sam sees all the lines, you know. He's even being patient and waiting for us as we explain. Right, it. right. He does it right when yeah, we're Yeah, we're a little bit slower, so we have to no, just kind of... No, <laughs> hey, don't, don't throw us. We have to talk it through. Right, we right, of course. Just do of it. course, of course. It's explaining it. Paul. Right. It's explaining it. <laughs> all right, so Blood St. Meyer's going to go get an overgrown tomb. Sam's already down to 14 life, and so now the Street Wraith. So let's see if Sam can find himself a threat... It's going to have to be a Goyf. And he has Delirium, so he can even find a Traverse into a Death Shadow because he is at 12 life. <laughs> well, he found himself a Mistress Bob. So now we're going to see Thought Seize. And this makes a lot of sense from Sam's perspective. He also gets to keep up Tarfire this turn. Right. And that'll certainly kill something. Ooh, we're, we're Silver Gale Abdef is going to hit the battle. Sam, hit the Sam preparing for the late game here. Yes, he knows what's up. It's not the most potent threat, but it is certainly the card that's the most annoying from Sam's perspective. Right. And there's a bobble. May as well see what, uh, what's going on here. So Sam, Sam kind of tanking a little bit here. It's not quite as obvious to just fire off the Mishra's bobble right away because I think because Sam doesn't have a threat, he really wants to find one. So, what he can do is 
Ooh, there's an ether vial. Basically, choose to draw a card, Mishra's Bobble himself. If he doesn't like the top card, he can use a fetch land to shuffle it away. Well, he didn't bobble himself right away. Right, he waited to draw. Yep. Because he didn't have a fetch land. He's got two now. By the way, that was an interesting play by Jonathan. He, I think, sniffed out that there was going to be either uh, a tar fire or perhaps a fatal push and just said, you know, I drew an ether vial. I'll just play that and leave up to spell. Right. And not only that, those two drops are kind of conditional removal creatures. Yes. Just playing them as a, as a two mana 2-2 two -two isn't really the best. That's right. So I like that, ooh, Colagon's command for Sam Black. Right. So Sam chose not to fetch because he, know, he knew that that was a good card on top. He can actually use this Colagon's command to draw a card if he wants because he can return a Street Wraith from his graveyard back to his hand. Yeah, he decided not to. Jonathan yeah. would have been just fine if Sam decided to use his mana in that way. And Sam finds a Tarmogoyf. He found a Goyf. Yep. Goyf's going to resolve. Yep. And this clock is going to get rolling. But now Jonathan's also up and running. Now he can start putting in Merfolk using his Aether Vial while leaving up his reactive spells. And this is where Jonathan wants to be. He also found a Silver Gill Adept off the top yeah. of his library. This is a, not, not a horrible spot for John because he can use the Tidebinder Mage to lock down the Tarmogoyf. And he also has a Dispel to protect mm. it from a Tar Fire or any removal spell. And that, I think that's probably his game plan. He could also just opt to bounce it, but then Sam can just replay it, and that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Yeah, he's not, he's not able to apply pressure at this point. Right. John doesn't know Sam's hand. He's probably just looking to play around one removal spell. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe John is going to opt to take the damage here and just bounce it end of turn to kind of get the tempo back in his favor. Because if he was committed to the Tidebinder Mage plan, he, he should have done it before, of course, Sam That's chose right. to attack. How big is that Tarmogoyf? We have an artifact, a creature, sorcery, land. Any instance? No. Nope. Four Although five. this member would not get it, though. <laughs> That's right. It's a traditionally sized Tarmogoyf right yes. now, the 4-5. It's a reasonable Tarmogoyf. 6-7, yeah. that's, that's when you get into unreasonable territory. That is unreasonable. It is one tar fire away from glory here, though. And 7-8 is come on territory. Yeah. Like, come on. Come on. Yeah. Planeswalker and a tribal <laughs> spell, really? <laughs> that is Mac. That is peak Tarmogoyf, right? 7-8. Um, I don't think it can be an 8-9. Can nine. it be an 8-9? I think it might be able to be an 8-9. Yep. <laughs> Fine, I'll count. Twitch chat will let us know for sure. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to let them tell us. Yeah. I, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. I refuse. Silvergill Adept from Jonathan. So Jonathan choosing to be very patient here. Draws a card off of it. Uh, can't find lands, though. I think that's another Tidebinder Mage, though. Get it in there. Yeah. I don't think John has any intention of... Chump blocking with Silver Go Adept. It is 8 9. 8 9. Yeah, All right. Somebody did say 9 8 also. So yeah, I think we forgot <laughs> Enchantment or Planeswalker when yeah. we were running the numbers. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think Sam knows that John has both the spell and the Tidebinder Mage, so he's going to save his removal. Make sure he has ways to deal with the Tidebinder Mage. But Sam, not drawing a lot of threats here. No, he is drawing a heck of a lot of lands. Oh. Abrupt Decay. Right. That's a pretty good answer for a Tidebinder Mage. Yeah. I think Sam might be asking for the Oracle text because the Tidebinder Mage is foreign. Yeah, so this is what it says. It says, when Tidebinder Mage enters the battlefield, tap target red or green creature and opponent controls, and that creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Tidebinder Mage. So it will tap it in any scenario here. That part happens no matter what. Right, it will, it will tap. Yes, and even if Sam responds with a card like Abrupt Decay or Tarfire, right. He will not get to attack with his Tarmogoyf this turn, but he still is going to 
do that, which makes good sense. Yeah. But these and little tempo plays, even though he didn't get to keep his Tidebinder Major, are going to start adding up for Jonathan. And he still wants to use that Tower Fire on his main phase because, of course, Jonathan can just put in a Lord of Atlantis or any Lord effect to fizzle the Tower Fire because it would make the Tidebinder Mage into a 3-3. Yeah, Jonathan didn't, and he also did not use that Dispel. Yeah. Being patient what is, because what of course. What is he saving it for? Well, he has another Tidebinder Mage in his hand. I see. And he just can't seem to hit a land drop to save his right. life, can he? And those Tidebinder Mages basically acting as a fog. Every yes. turn he gets to put one into play, it, it will be guaranteed to tap down Tarmogoyf. And Sam's not really drawing a whole lot of action. He just drew another Tarmogoyf. Oh, okay. It's pretty good. Wow. But Sam's going to clear the way, and that's going to force Jonathan to get this other Tidebinder Mage in to not take a hit. And John has exactly two copies of Tidebinder Mage oh, in wow. his sideboard. Drew both of them. Yeah. And there's Tarmogoyf number two. One thing that John doesn't play in his deck, though, which would have just been the game, is Vapor Snag. Yes. Zero copies of Vapor Snag. There's finally land number three for Jonathan Zaxek. And Sam still has a Culligan's Command in hand. I think John wants to keep the Dispel up here, but it's been kind of stalled on lands. He's going to go for a Spreading Seas here, Paul. <laughs> what are you targeting, the Blood Crypt? Probably the Blood Crypt, because Sam does have double black spells in his deck. Yes. Ooh, another Silver God Adept. He's got all the tools he needs to win this game. Unfortunately, he's just been short on mana, and two Tarmogoyfs is a real handful. Yeah. Sam is, interestingly, though, at five. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he find? What? He drew another Tarmogoyf. What? Third time's the charm. Wow. Man, trip Tarmogoyfs, huh? And I don't think that's a lethal Tarmogoyf, so John can choose to take the damage here. Oh, yeah. He's only hitting for, what, six or something? Yeah. John's at 15. Are right, they going to get a count. <laughs> Good old there Tarmogoyf. Go. Oh, we got enchantment in the graveyard, too. Yeah. So is that is a 6-7? 7-8? 6-7? Seven? Seven, seven? No Planeswalker, right? So enchantment, creature, artifact, land, sorcery. Tribal? Instant. Instant tribal. Yeah. And Sam, also, yeah. also because he cast Hand Disruption earlier, knows that John still has a Dispel in his hand. Yes. Seven, eight, three, seven, eight three, Tarmogoyfs. Three, seven, eight Tarmogoyfs. Now we have 21 power for six <laughs> mana. We've now exceeded the other game. <laughs> right. This is ridiculous. Yeah. It's going to be really hard for wait, John wait, to Wait, wait, did he back. just draw Lord of Atlantis? He did. He did, but he doesn't have Dispel for protection. Oh, and no. Sam Black does have Coligan's Command up. Oh, he was <laughs> so close. If, he, if that was Triple Island, he would just win. Right. If the Mutal Vault was an island, John would be heading to the finals. Unbelievable. He would be attacking for six unblockable. Yeah. Now what is he going to do? Well, Sam only has one card in hand. Does he go for it here? Is the situation getting any better for him? He can choose to play a Harbinger of the Tides here to bounce. He's going to go for Silver Gale Adept. Time away. Okay. We'll which, which one something. do you want to reveal? Okay, Harbinger. Harbinger and then draw a card. So he really wants to find a land here. He did. He finds a land. That buys him time. He can now play a Harbinger and bounce one, bounce the non-Tidebinder Mage Tarmogoyf. But he opts not to. He passed the turn. He does have two blockers. Yeah, but I don't think that's and there, and a it's winning not situation. A, it, it is a non-lethal Tarmogoyf. Does he know? He does not know about the Kologon's command, though, right? Right. And he is keeping up the spell.
I get. I guess you're right. I guess the Tarmogoyfs are not lethal. They Jonathan, are not. Jonathan found the third blue source, so he can just choose to take seven from one of the Tarmogoyfs if Sam attacks with both, and chump block one with a silver go adept, <laughs> go down to one. Then he can play Lord of Atlantis with dispel backup yes, for the win. He can. This is insane. <laughs> I don't think John is ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is uh, speculating. Yeah. It looks like John has pieced together a victory here by the slimmest of margins. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that spreading seas. Doing that spreading seas. Work. Unreal. That dispel is going to win in this game. Yeah, that's that's not quite enough. One point short. Sam is going to sacrifice Avertant Catacombs here. Go to four. What is he looking to do here? What is he thinking about? Is he on two cards in hand? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I, maybe we don't know what the, the last card he drew for the turn is. We'll find out, won't we? Should make it a lot more interesting here. We will certainly <laughs> find out, won't we? Wha it's a street wraith. Oh, wow. That does wow. not change anything here. Jonathan has to be so excited he is here. So stoked. Sam has one mana up. It can only be a fatal push. John just goes Lord of Atlantis with the spell backup, and that's this is going to do it. it. Attack for the win, and Jonathan Zaxxed <laughs> puts himself into the finals of the GP with Merfolk. Wow, he's in, and I can tell you, <sighs> I just got told who he's going to be playing against. Oh yeah, Josh Utter Layton. Josh Utter Layton, okay. Josh Utter Layton won 2 0 against Jerry Thompson, and we are going to see Jonathan Zaksek versus Josh Utter Layton after this.